I thank you guys for joining this morning uh, to our database cloud service office hours. Uh, today we're going to be talking about connecting to the autonomous uh, database uh, from Azure, or Azure, I guess is the way you pronounce. Is it Azure or Azure? I'm not sure. I think I've heard it both ways. Um, I haven't checked Webster for the official definition, but I've heard Microsoft pronounce it both ways. So okay. uh, I think equally correct. Awesome, awesome. All right, so my name is Tammy Bednar. I'm a Senior Director of Product Management, and I've been focusing on database cloud services uh, for about the last year. And so I'm really excited to have Alex join us today. He's a Senior Principal Product Manager, and he focuses on de .NET and Windows. And what, are, what else do you work on, Alex? And uh, so why don't we turn it over to you and we can get started. Well, .NET and Windows keeps me busy enough in our team. So uh, we, we work on the data provider for .NET. So anytime you have a C Sharp or BB.NET app and need to get access to Oracle database, need to be able to use Rack or any HA capabilities, things like that, performance capabilities, uh, we enable that from the, the middle tier side to the Oracle database. And then uh, I, we also handle database on Windows. Uh, so things such as uh, Hyper-V certifications and you know, latest Windows Server 2019 support for database and client support uh, is, um, is stuff we, we work on. So with that said, um, let's talk about Azure and what Oracle Cloud and Autonomous Database uh, have, are doing with Azure. So back in the summer, we announced a partnership, and I'll cover kind of the, the highlights of that since it, it's more encompassing than autonomous database, and uh, more than likely you're using other Oracle services and Azure services besides, um, you know, just a database and apps. So I want to just give you a high level what the entire partnership is. We'll be brief about that. And then we'll start talking about how to use autonomous database from those uh, uh, from from different Microsoft services and Microsoft tools. Um, <clears throat> so we'll, I'll show you some Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code connecting to autonomous database and being able to uh, use that as a developer so that your developers can, um, can use autonomous database and they don't necessarily have to go to the management console. They can just do most of their management, their data, their developer management tasks for the autonomous database from within Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. It's the uh, ID or the code editor they're most familiar with. And then we'll talk about deploying to Azure an application that connects to autonomous database. Uh, what needs to happen in for, for that? So we'll, I'll show you a, a web app that you can do that. And then we'll talk a little bit about the uh, Oracle Cloud to Azure Direct Interconnect. This gives you a fast pipeline between the, the uh, two clouds um, and also ensures that your data never gets on the public internet, uh, even though it's it's secured by um, uh, we we secure the uh, uh, the communications with TLS SSL. Uh, just you know, as a as an additional benefit, you know, you want to make sure that harden your access to the data as, as much as possible. We have the direct interconnect, and also it's very key for performance as well. And when after that, we'll take questions. So let's talk about the partnership and what was announced this summer. So uh, what Microsoft and Oracle announced is a cloud partnership. And there's several thing aspects to it. Uh, the three key ones that uh, most customers focus on are, one, the direct interconnect. So you get a fast pipe between uh, Oracle's cloud data centers to Microsoft's Cloud Data Center, so this is like uh, within the same region, so U.S. East Coast to U.S. East Coast, so uh, Oracle's Ashburn is connected to Microsoft's U.S. East, I think they're U.S. East 1 or 2, I can't remember, the one that they have in the Washington, D.C. area. Those two are connected, so you can have a direct interconnect set up between the two, and I'll talk a little bit about how to set that up. Uh, we also have one set up for London uh, currently, and we're opening it up to uh, another European data center, U.S. West Coast, as well as uh, one in Asia. So that's kind of the, the next on the list. And, and that gives you just that if you have, if you're a corporate user and you need, and you want fast data access between your client side and your database, um, in a most common example, your autonomous database, your autonomous database is in an Oracle data center and your .NET app happens to be deployed uh, as, a, uh, as a app service in Azure. Uh, you wanna connect those together so that they have fast access. That's what you, you you use the direct interconnect to do that. 
Another aspect of this partnership is unified identity and access management. Uh, essentially, you'll, you'll be able to um, have a user in Oracle Cloud, and that user in Oracle Cloud will be recognized in the Azure Cloud, as well as recognized in your on-premise Active Directory. So basically, single sign-on all the way from on-premise Active Directory to Azure Cloud to Oracle's Cloud. Uh, that way, it make, it's easier for your, your users to be able to sign on once and then be recognized across the different clouds and on-premise environments that you use. Um, also makes uh, managing access easier instead of having to, ma uh, instead of having to you know, uh, grant or revoke over all three clouds, you have one user or, or three, three areas. Um, you have one user that you can manage across the, the three areas, the two clouds and the on-premise. So single sign-on, easier management there. And lastly is collaborative support. So if you call uh, Microsoft or Oracle, uh, our cloud supports, and you have a problem that involves the other vendor software, uh, that other vendor will immediately be engaged without having to open up a ticket with them and you know, trying to get, trying to get the two tickets merged together. We'll have collaborative support where if you call Microsoft, they'll get Oracle involved if it involves Oracle software on their cloud. Um, and if, uh, if you have a problem using, say, OCI with Microsoft Windows, and it, it requires some uh, 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 Microsoft help, Oracle support will be able to pull in Microsoft. So it should be a better customer server experience for our mutual customers. And the reason why we're doing this is that we're seeing more and more, and analysts have commented on this, uh, uh, industry analysts have said, uh, the multi-cloud is where things are going in the cloud space nowadays. And the multi-cloud is, is uh, that there are a lot of clouds out there and each cloud vendor has different expertise. And you'll, you'll never find one cloud vendor that will serve all your corporate needs. Um, there's some that do, you know, have, you know, a lot of SaaS applications that you might need. Maybe you need pass from Azure. Maybe you need uh, infrastructure from Oracle. So all these, uh, all these different vendors, uh, and even within like pass and infrastructure and SaaS, there's, you know, you'll probably have multiple vendors for each one too, depending on their expertise. Things like with Oracle, autonomous databases is something that no other cloud vendor has. And if it's something that you as a customer find value in, uh, you're gonna have to use the Oracle Cloud. And a lot of times we see that uh, we do have Azure customers who want to use the autonomous database. So that's what we often see. And that, that's the reason why this partnership is happening is both because of the industry as well as a lot of customer demand for it. So what can you do with autonomous database and Microsoft software now? So let me talk about the tools. So we'll talk about the developer side. So when you're beginning to develop an app with the autonomous database, you're going to want to be able to connect to autonomous database from your tools and be able to uh, try to manipulate them. So let me first talk about Visual Studio Code, and then I'll talk about Visual Studio. And if you're not that familiar with Microsoft tools, Visual Studio Code is a code editor. And Visual Studio is a integrated development environment. So Visual Studio is much more complete in terms of uh, automating more complex tasks. Um, and Visual Studio Code is more of a, a code editor. So it has a, it's, uh, it's a GUI. It has a, a lot less functionality than Visual Studio, but VS Code is, um, is, um, has some nice features to it. It's multi-platform, it's free. So uh, we see a lot of people using it. So what, what Oracle offers for Visual Studio Code is a, a tool set that we plug in right into. So we call it Oracle Developer Tools for VS Code. It's free. It supports uh, all the operating systems that VS Code runs on, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS and it connects to on-premise and cloud Oracle databases, including autonomous database. If you wanna get Oracle developer tools for VS Code, um, you just go to the Visual Studio Code Marketplace. And uh, that's available, that actually is searchable from within VS Code itself. So um, I'll, I'll show you quickly how to do that. Um, and since it's a new product, we released this uh, during the summer and we've just uh, come out with our third release. Um, just uh, last month. <clears throat> and this uh, release you know, supports things like connecting to Oracle Database, Oracle Autonomous Database. You can edit and execute any of your SQL, PL SQL within Oracle. You can view results as a CSV or JSON. 
We, we support autocomplete and IntelliSense so that when you start typing your, um, your select query, uh, we provide a list of, um, of schema objects that you probably want to reference, uh, and, uh, and I'll show you that too. Syntax coloring, code snippets, and then we, uh, in our second release uh, that was in the late summer, we, we introduced several um, new options with an Oracle Database Explorer, which is be able to explore your database schema, view your table, run your store procedure and functions, edit, execute, and save PL SQL, and filter results. Of course, that was a laundry list of features. It's much more memorable if I show you uh, how it works. So let's go to my Visual Studio Code. And I already have um, Oracle Developer Tools here. You'll see that this little icon represents that. Um, if I want to uh, go find it, I can go to Extensions. And then um, these are the ones enabled, but if, you know, if I search in the marketplace, you know, I can find it here. And then from here, you just install it. Here, I already have it installed, but it would have the install button. You just install, and then the uh, nice little icon shows up from here. So here we can see, let me move this over a little bit. Here we can see uh, I've got three connections I had made before, but if I wanted to create a new connection, uh, like to my autonomous database, I just hit the little plus button. And then I'm gonna reference my uh, TNS. And here I define uh, my TNS admin location. And since it's to an autonomous database we're gonna connect to, I have to define a wallet location. Of course, if you are have an on-premise database that requires a, a, a wallet, you can also define it here too. Um, right now, I don't believe I have anything in this directory. I do not. So I need to go and go to my cloud and download my credentials. So just to show you how to download credentials, it'll be much easier once you see the Visual Studio tools. This is the Visual Studio code. So let me go to my autonomous transaction processing databases. This is my cloud administration. And I've got one, this database is up. So let's go download the cloud credentials for this here. So database connection and download and type in my, oops, let's type that. I think this is the hardest part uh, is typing in passwords in the cloud, Alex. <laughs> it is, it is because they require you to match and <laughs> it I- uh, It's gonna be long and it's gonna have- up There it is, oh, there you go. that was difficult. <laughs> okay, so let's save the file. And I'm gonna save it in the D deployment directory. Say okay. And we see it here. Let me unzip this guy. Um, what, denied? Okay, maybe it was just still downloading. Okay, so let's uh, copy the contents out. Okay, so now we should be able to pull up. Let's see, uh, it should be there. What is, okay, was we'll select folder, there it is, okay. So now we can choose, let's choose my OOW 2019 low, DB low, and find it. And I've created several ones before, here it is. And then it's gonna be the wallet location, we'll use a wallet file, it's, it'll be in the, it's in the same directory. It's not an administrator because I've created an HR schema, but we can put admin in there if we want. We'll save this guy. Oh, actually I have low already, so let's do high. Let's do OW high. We want something different. Uh, 2019 high, there we go. And uh, it should be the same username, password. We'll create the connection. And uh-oh. Oh, I know. I have to use the more complicated password. It's the cloud. Yeah, the travails of the cloud. I can't use HR, HR anymore. I've got to use something that's a little more complex. There it is. Makes my demos much harder now. I remember to type that in. So now we're connected to the autonomous database. I created an HR schema there and we can now browse our tables so we can see what we got here. We got the typical HR schema. Let's take a look at the data. We can see the data as I right click and it'll come out here. I can perform queries. So I can do select star from employees and I can execute SQL. 
from there. Uh, oh, I need to associate the connection with this. Okay, so uh, let me see, let me see. Uh, so let me, uh, oh, let me see, let me see. Uh, Oracle PL SQL, yeah, so I just have to associate the, so that it knows I'm trying to use this particular, uh, there we go, Oracle SQL. And then I think there's one more step I'm trying to remember. Okay. Connect. No. Okay, I forget now. But the reason why it's not executing is because this needs to be associated with a specific connection and I've forgotten off the top of my head how to do that association, but that's okay. What, so other things we can do is we can even see uh, different packages and PL SQL here, as I mentioned, and then you can uh, uh, run them if you want. So here we, we provide um, the value. Oops, uh, P number. There it is. Okay, so let's say uh, 17. Let's say 17, because we know that's prime, it should return a one. There we see, we return the one because it is a prime value. And then we could, uh, so that's the ty type of stuff you can do. It's very simple, it's a code editor. So, um, so it has this type of stuff. Oh, and then, uh, and so that's, that's what you can do. We're connected to autonomous database. And um, that, that's, that's kind of it for developer tools. So it's fairly new, which is why I covered a little more in depth. Uh, but with Oracle Developer Tools for Visual Studio, this is Microsoft's IDE, where uh, we've actually built much more robust cloud tools. So we're, we've targeted um, um, a, new, a new set of tools for uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure in here in Server Explorer. And this set of tools, is um, is also free uh, because uh, Visual Studio only runs on Windows. It's uh, it's on Win th these tools are only on Windows only. It also has the similar functionality in terms of connecting to on-premise cloud databases and autonomous database. The main uh, difference is that we've got uh, well, there's actually many differences because these tools are a bit older. Um, so we've had a much more time to develop them. So we've had them since 2003 or four. And so they've gone through a lot of iterations. They've done a lot more. Uh, we've done a lot more with the Oracle database in terms of tool sets. You can do schema compare, things like that in here. But we've also added, we will be adding, I should say, because it's going to go beta very, very soon, an Oracle Cloud Infrastructure node. And I'll show you how to use that inside the Server Explorer. And this will be available from the Visual Studio Marketplace as well as uh, OTN. So the, um, let's see a demo of that. So let's go to Visual Studio here. And here we have uh, Server Explorer. And here you have your typical uh, connecting to the database with a data connection. And what we can do is, this is new, this is the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure node. And this will allow you to connect to the Oracle Cloud and do some developer level management of your autonomous database. So um, again, this is, will be in beta soon, um, probably in the next week or two. So what we do is that once you've installed this from the Visual Studio Marketplace, uh, you can sign up for the Oracle Cloud here, which will just take you to a web page uh, to sign up for the Oracle Cloud. You can sign up for Autonomous Database, um, or you can add a new account entry if you have one already created. So I already created a configuration file. So we'll just need to tell, um, ODT where to pick that up and let me uh, be actually I can just do this here and it's under deployment oops not under deployment I'm sorry it's under cloud credentials here's the cloud config yep and that will load load for me a couple of my OCI CLI profiles that I've already created and it's just a um, 
I think it's just a JSON file. So if you open up, you can see it's just JSON defining all these tenancy IDs, user, OCID, region, just tells it which is my, uh, which, where is my uh, cloud tenancy, what is the user, API keys, display names, the region, et cetera. So uh, I already have US East defined, so I want to define US West. So we say, okay, We're picking up US West. We tell um, the tools which compartment we want to use. We're going to use the Aura DB demo. And let me pin this so that it stops disappearing. And we see that US West is here created. So we can see in here we have ATP and ADWs and our, our two nodes for that. And then if we um, uh, expand the nodes, we see that I have a database already up and running. And then I have another database that's been stopped. Um, and of course, you can connect to other uh, regions here. So we have US East. And we can see here we have another database. It's my disaster recovery open world database. And then in, I have an autonomous data warehouse, which uses free ADB. So in here, you can set up your free autonomous database account and use these tools with it. It's perfectly fine. Another way to change region is just to right click. You can change compartments, of course, just right click and then choose, you know, I want my Tokyo region or I want my Frankfurt region or whatever. That's the only ones I have access to. Um, you know, obviously you'll have, whoops, you'll have access to other regions, but um, if you if you subscribe to those, but the, the, these tools, basically these tools, you should never, if you are a developer, you shouldn't have to leave the tools uh, to go to the management council because um, should, this should take care of most all your developer database tasks, uh, uh, really. So what can we do once we have the database here? Um, most obvious thing you want to do is connect to it. So we can create a data connection and I'll, I'll show you how to do that shortly. Uh, I just want to cover some of the other things before we connect to the database. We can clone the database. So here, uh, this existing one, we just choose uh, the clone type, the compartment where we want to clone it to, display name, uh, is it always free, CPU count, et cetera, et cetera. So all the information you would do is you would normally create a new database. Actually, let's, let's just create a new database first and just have it create in the background while we do this. And um, so here you can just see the options, what you want to be display name, the database, whether you can even do a dedicated uh, ATP or ADW if you want. Um, we don't, we, we're not gonna do that because you know, I don't want my cost center to be uh, charged for dedicated since I'm just doing a demo here rather than needing the full dedicated support. But if you need the full dedicated support, it's a dedicated data, autonomous dedicated database is awesome. So we can also do an always free database uh, and we just set CPU storage. We wanted to auto scale or we bring your own license. I already got the license, so I'm gonna bring it. We just have to set the password. So um, let me just set the password. And then we'll just create this database in the background. And you can see that it's got a little yellow dot, meaning it's, it's uh, being stood up right now. It's, it's setting things up. So it's not ready yet, but it's in the process of getting ready. And then when the yellow disappears, that means the database is up and running. So we'll come back to that a little bit later. Uh, you can do things here, start and stop the database. You can terminate, which is, um, means get rid of it. Um, we can restore a database from a previous backup. So these are all the backups that have been taken since they've been up. Uh, scale up or scale down, update your credentials, update your license type from bring your own to, um, to you want, you want uh, to buy one from Oracle. Uh, and then uh, since if you don't have one already and then download credential files, which is uh, what, what you saw me do in VS code through the administration council. But here you can, um, you can decide where you want to download it to, choose your directory, and then you say download and then it'll download. But since we already have it, we don't need to do that. Okay, so let's take a look at connecting to this. So we'll create a data connection here. Um, sure, why not? We'll, we'll download the credentials again. Um, let's, let's create another directory here off. Uh, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, I don't wanna, uh, let's put in another directory. So we will do, oops, wrong one there, D folder. Deployment, and we'll make a new folder. It's called test, just to show you how it works. Okay, and continue. Okay, so now it's downloaded the credentials. It's gonna use that as my location. 
uh, we're going to let's choose DB the one that's up is OWDB this guy and we'll choose low we already have that we're already connected to high here so we'll connect to the low one just to show you a new guy and then HR and then my password my special cloud password here and we'll see if that works it works okay so you say okay and here we're connected so if you've used Server Explorer um, with the um, Oracle developer tools before, the UI is exactly the same now. Just the OCI cloud infrastructure is needed to manage the overall cloud aspects of databases. And now we've moved into using the individual connections. So here we can see things like tables as we usually do, my HR tables and all the usual fun stuff that you can do with uh, Oracle developer tools, which if you are a, Visual Studio developer using Oracle. You've seen this tons of times before, so I'm not going to uh, belabor any of this, but um, it's, it's, it's just the same stuff you've seen before there. And uh, let's, see if, uh, let's see if we're done here. Nope, not quite yet, probably because I started a little late, but we'll visit, revisit this guy, see if he's ready. So basically, it's, it's um, all the things you can do. You can uh, certainly uh, look at your PLSQL, your uh, modify your schema, do all sorts of things like that that you can do from here. So that that is um, that are those are the tools in a nutshell. So let me see, is there anything else I want to show you here? Um, no, I think that's about it. So let's move on to actually using an application. So using Azure with Autonomous Database. So now that you've seen the tools, you'll want to see, well, what about a real life deployment? Let me connect from, you know, a common scenario is using an Azure web app in ASP.NET and then deploying that uh, to Azure and then as an app service. And then from there, connecting to the Autonomous Database. How do I do that? So it's very similar to any other application. Um, and if you used Visual Studio before to deploy, um, it's not that difficult. So let's hide this for now. So I have a web app here. And um, this is using managedodp.net. <clears throat> and now you see my super secret password. Shh, don't tell anyone. And then uh, luckily, even if you know my password, you don't have my wallet. So without my wallet, you can't connect. <laughs> so uh, it's more than just password security here. I provided the uh, service name. You also don't, uh, sorry, the, uh, yeah, the net service name. You also don't have the, the uh, connect descriptor. So that will also make it difficult as well, uh, knowing that. But what we have here is the data source. And then I'll show you where I reference that. Uh, we create a connection, a command, open the connection, then give the command some text that we want to execute. Here is a simple select statement. We execute that statement, read the data, and output that first result to the screen on the web page. So very, very simple app. We're just trying to show kind of a proof of concept how it all comes together here. So you, are, you might be wondering, where do I put my wallet and my, um, my uh, TNS names and sqlnet.org? Well, we're gonna put it right here in this local directory. And uh, when I deploy it, uh, if we open up the web config, in my web config, we have this uh, odp.net uh, uh, management section in which you can provide um, settings for, uh, for ODP.NET. And here we set the wallet location for the setting name to where it's gonna be on the uh, web server on Azure. And then we also set the TNS admin as well. So wallet location, TNS admin. So here, D home site WW root is gonna be the base directory when you deploy any web app to Azure. And then we just have a subdirectory called DB just to you know, keep things clean. And just these are the database credentials and database uh, SQL net and TNS name that ORA files. And then TNS admin, we just put it all in the same one there. So that's, that's where it's getting its TNS names and wallet information from. And then, whoops, let me push that back. Uh, now we need to make sure those files are actually in there. So let's uh, open this folder up. And uh, I'm just going to copy what's in here over to there. And once it's copied there, I want to add 
those files to my project so that when I bundle it all up and deploy, those files get added as well since they're needed to connect to the database. So here, I mean, essentially, you just only, I mean, for ODP net, you really just need cwallet.ssl and then the, whoops, I'm not trying to move it, sqlnet.org and tnsnames.org. The other ones are for things like Java and, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I just kind of include everything. It's just easier. Okay, so we're, we're ready to deploy. So let's deploy. So I'm gonna, I right clicked on the project, I hit publish, and I have an Azure account. So I'm, I'll be able to deploy this to Azure. So this will be an app service, it'll be a new one. So we hit publish. And you can see I'm already connected to uh, my, my Azure account and logged in as me. Uh, I can provide an app name. Um, I'm just gonna go with the default. I'm just gonna use my Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. I have a resource group set up, so it's gonna use that, and then I can choose a new hosting plan. Uh, I want to, since this is just a test app, I want to minimize my charges, so I'm gonna choose a basic plan rather than the standard, and I'm gonna co-locate it closer to myself, which is the Western US too. Now, one, one thing I want to note is I'm using the basic one uh, rather than free or shared, and we need basic, uh, due to security reasons. Uh, when you connect to autonomous database, um, there's a need, you need to set an IIS load user profile. Uh, whenever you have a wallet, you need to uh, set the load user, pro to enable the ability for IIS to load the user profile. And that permits the storing and loading of certificates in the user store. And that's needed for application isolation. The free and shared versions of the app service do not provide uh, this capability, uh, only the basic and above. So that's why I'm choosing basic. So if and when Microsoft enables that in the future uh, for IS to be set in the free and shared, you'll be able to use that as well when connecting autonomous database. And this is purely for security reasons. Um, you know, we, uh, autonomous databases are always using wallets at this time uh, to connect, uh, just to make sure things are secure. So we'll create. This should take a couple minutes. So what it's gonna do is go to Azure. It's gonna stand up a website for me. And once it stands up a website for me, it will go and um, uh, start deploying all my files. So it'll deploy my project, it'll deploy my uh, uh, ODP.NET um, assembly, it'll also deploy uh, my wallet and my uh, 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 SQLnet tnsnames.org files, all my config files there. So it'll take a couple minutes. Um, and what we'll do is once it gets stood up, uh, we'll be able to start configuring it while it's also up uh, and that because uploading is still uploading the files and what we're going to need to do is enable that load user profile setting that I was talking about and it's uh, in IS it's called load user profile uh, but in uh, in Azure it's called website underscore load underscore user underscore profile and you just set it to one to enable that feature so uh, once it's finished um, deploying or I should say once it's finished once it starts copying files it should be uh, on its way to deploying. And let's just take a look at this. Alex, while we're waiting for this to deploy, there was a question. Sure. I know if there are similar processes or tools available to connect to the uh, DBAS services or DBCS services like VM and VM as well from Azure. I know you can connect. I don't know about our tools though. Uh, yeah, connect you can, uh, cause it, it only requires a, a, a data provider to do so. Tools, we're working on that. We've worked on autonomous first. We're gonna you know, look at other things to manage such as storage uh, and uh, VMs as well. And certainly things like uh, you know, DBCS we'll take a look at. Um, you know, there's certainly a lot of services, but at this time we're focused on autonomous and building out the infrastructure. Uh, once we do that, um, and as part of that, we will start also working on uh, tooling uh, for Great. the additional services. So, uh, we want to get past this beta and then go production. And then once we do that, then we'll go to, um, we'll look at a lot of these other stuff. Thanks, Alex. No problem. Um, okay, so let's see. I might need a refresh again. Uh, no, that was just, that was just the, uh, that was not the website. Click the wrong, there it is. There's the website. It just didn't show up in time. Okay, so here's the website. We're in Azure console. 
And what we want to do is, as I mentioned before, set this website load user profile setting. So we go to configuration in the console and we add a new application setting and this will enable the ability to use the wallet. Okay, so we say website user load profile, set that to one. That enables it and let's make sure I spelled that correctly, load user profile correct. We say okay, we save. And what saving really is doing is it's IS, so it's gonna take you know, maybe about a minute for IS to like shut down and come up because it essentially is a um, a setting. It's a configuration setting that has to be enabled or disabled at uh, uh, at startup time. So that's you know. So right now, even though it's it says it's up, it's not really up. But we can we'll, we'll wait a few seconds to hit hit the database again. Um, otherwise, it'll just give you an error that says it's not ready. But we'll see. So let's see, what other interesting things can I tell you here? Um, so these tools, um, this Cloud Explorer will be available to those who are using Visual Studio 2017 or 2000, Visual Studio 2019. So both of the most recent Visual Studio versions Microsoft has. And uh, we'll, we'll announce it on our Twitter feed. Uh, it's at Oracle, D-O-T-N-E-T, -E at Oracle.net. But you spell out the, the dot part, D-O-T, because you can't use dots in in Twitter, so you have to spell it out. Um, and we'll also uh, talk about it on our web, our, on our uh, OTN website, or now longer OTN, our oracle.com website. Now we call it, oh, failure during handshake. Uh, it, okay, that usually means it didn't reboot. Okay, I gotta, let's try this one more time. It might need to be refreshed again. Not sure why, did it not accept the setting? Let's take a look again. No, it's there. It's enabled. Let's just refresh again or. Okay, that's very odd. Never happened before. Let's see if it's just some kind of failure. Okay, let me take a look to see if it copied up the uh, I'm going to have to do some quick debugging here. Let's see if there's actually, if it copied up the, um, so this is just the, uh, come on. Okay. Just the uh, console. Okay. So let's see. No, the wallet files up there. This is very odd. Ah, uh, the, the pitfalls of live demos, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try, uh, let me try just forcing a, a re reboot again. And uh, let me delete it. Let me uh, delete. And then let me add it again. Unless I typed it wrong. Uh, load user. Profile, website load user profile, set it to one, say okay, and we'll save. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let's go back. should still be coming up, so we should get an error that says it's not ready yet. As it reboots. And yeah, it's hanging because it's, it's not ready yet. And we'll try it one more time. There it is, okay. Not sure what happened there. I mean, maybe I typed it wrong. We'll have to go look at the video again. But we see it, it returned uh, Stephen King, who's the first employee when you do the uh, select from the employees table. So there you have it. You, it's, a, it's a real working demo. You know that because you saw, you saw the error. Um, 
Uh, I can't explain why. Maybe I mistyped it. It might have been. But obviously, uh, the handshake failure is usually indicative that it can't resolve the, um, the wallet, you know, something wrong with the wallet, or I can't find the wallet. But once we made sure that we, I typed it incorrectly, it worked. So it must have been, maybe I, I mistyped it. So uh, that's good. We got some success. So let's move on and talk a little bit about the uh, direct interconnect. And just want to see where we are in time. OK. Oh. OK. So we got 15 minutes left, but I'll try to wrap things up pretty quick. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the direct interconnect is uh, something that a lot of enterprise customers want. Um, why they want it between the two clouds is just like um, any other reason. Uh, they want to make sure they have, they're not sharing a they don't want to go over the public internet, even if it's a secure connection with uh, TLS securing it. Uh, uh, they just want to make sure that um, they can get the throughput that they need for the, the uh, for the service level they need. They want to dedicate to just their use, you know, so that they don't have to share. They want low latency, and from a security standpoint, they want a private network, even though it's already secure. Just another layer of security to make it, you know, you know. Diff more difficult for hackers to, to get access to the data. So right now we have two regions up and running. We have US East um, in the Washington DC area and then the London area as well. And we have three planned regions we're gonna uh, uh, stand up soon. Uh, one is the Western US, another one is Central Europe, and the third one is in Asia. We also plan to uh, enable uh, government uh, data centers as well, so that the two government data centers in Oracle Cloud and Azure can also have the direct interconnect. So how do you set this up? Um, I'm gonna go over it very at a very high level, um, it just because um, it's, it, it's, it's, just a, it's just a number of steps you follow. And there are several blogs that uh, discuss how to do this in much more detail, but I'll just cover it at a very high, high level so that you, you know the general idea of what's going on. Um, basically, on the Oracle Cloud side, let's start with that, and then we'll talk about Azure side, and then we'll talk about how do you hook up the autonomous database dedicated as well as autonomous data, that database shared, uh, sorry, serverless together with Azure. So if you just want to set up cloud to cloud, a direct interconnect, uh, first thing you want to do is you set up your Oracle virtual cloud network in OCI. And then you set up a Oracle dynamic routing gateway to that and then attach that dynamic routing gateway to the VCN. Once you do that, you set up your Oracle circuit that interconnects to the fast connect and express route. Fast connect is what Oracle calls our direct interconnect and express route is what Microsoft calls uh, their direct interconnect. It's basically, it's the same thing, just two different uh, terms for uh, what we brand each of those uh, products. And once you do that, if you're just doing OCI to Azure straight, you just configure your VCN security list and route table to talk to the specific um, Azure uh, Azure uh, instance uh, or, or, um, or, or network that you wanted to talk to. So once you do the Oracle Cloud, and actually you'll, you'll be doing both at the same time since um, some of these steps requires knowing, you know, that the Azure network's already set up, so you have to define that, hey, we're connecting to this specific Azure network, so you have to know the settings for that, obviously. Um, then for Azure, what you need to do is, it's actually very, very similar. You'll see these steps are, hey, these are exactly the same step, steps as, as uh, Oracle Cloud Direct Connection setup. Uh, they're exactly the same. The terminology is just a little different because Azure uses a little bit different terminology. They call it a virtual network, whereas Oracle is called a VCN. They use the virtual network gateway, and we use the term dynamic routing gateway, but it's essentially the same thing using very similar looking wizards. So it's not that different. Um, and then you set up the Azure circuit that interconnects between fast connect and express route. Then you link the virtual network to the express route certificate uh, circuit. Then you create the network security groups and route table, then associate them to the virtual network. So that will get you a straight OCI to um, Azure direct interconnect. What if you want to hook up Oracle Autonomous Database, dedicated. So the th one thing you do different, um, or I should say substitute would be a better word, which, which is all the previous steps you saw, except for the last step. And the last step was configuring your security list and route table. You want to do that. Instead, your security list and route tables for your autonomous database instance. 
in the, 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 in the VCN and private subnet that it's in. So it's basically the same steps, but you just want to configure that. And then from the Azure side, you, you would configure your network security group and route tables to talk to that autonomous database too. So Azure, it's all the same steps, one through four, as you saw on the previous slide, but step five is different. You're configuring it for autonomous database dedicated. And autonomous database dedicated is the easier, I would, well, is the simpler one to set up. It's not much more complicated to set up serverless. It's just a little bit uh, different because you also need to set up this uh, service gateway as well. So it's all the steps with setting up um, that you saw in the previous slide was setting up the uh, uh, Oracle Direct Interconnect, except this time you also have to create a service gateway for the VCN and then create a dynamic routing group route table and then create the service gateway route table for that. And then for Azure, you just configure a network security group. So it's a little bit different from uh, data, autonomous database dedicated, uh, just an additional uh, step or two that you need to do. So I know this was, I had no detail about setting up the direct interconnect. What you wanna do is um, I would refer to the uh, bottom three links here. I'm sorry, the middle three links, the how to set up direct interconnect cloud and Azure. And then these two for serverless and for dedicated, if depending on if you're using serverless or dedicated, these blogs will go through in detail uh, and show you step-by-step step how to do how to set all of this up, I went at a high level. Um, and, if, and these other blogs will be helpful as well. Now, obviously, you, you wanna know what the links are to this and you can't see the links, but if you just go to otn.oracle.com slash windows, just remember that link, it links to all of these, these links here on, on, on the page. So you'll be able to find all these links on that page, otn.oracle.com slash windows. So with that said, um, I'll turn it back over to Tammy. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate that. Um, uh, thank you. That was very comprehensive. That was really good. I really appreciate that. Uh, does anybody have any questions? You can either put them in chat or you can unmute yourself and happy to talk to you live as well. No? Okay, I guess you, you covered it really well. So we will have a database cloud service office hours in November, probably towards the end, right before Thanksgiving. Um, if anybody has any topics they would like to hear, we'd be more than happy to get on and have and talk about those as well. Any previous recordings, we have some really great recordings. If you go to asktom.oracle.com and click on database cloud services, um, you will see previous recordings and in the upcoming recordings. So I, I would encourage you to subscribe uh, to our office hours so you can get notified uh, when the next one is coming up as well as any topics. Okay, with that, I think Alex, I really appreciate again for joining us today and all this great information. Um, I think I'll sign off for us. So thank you. No problem, Tammy. No problem. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody.